let's now start with the detailed understanding of the web of things uh, from a conceptual perspective. Uh, why did we need to transform or migrate from mere IOTs, which were perhaps good enough, to WOT? Actually, we have some problem known as the IoT problem. Um, IoT is a very good solution uh, for a certain problem in a certain context. But when the context changes, or if there is a change in the underlying technology, then the entire IoT architecture is changed vertically. Uh, so it means that we need to have a continuous support for interoperable uh, uh, technologies at the four layers while these layers continue to evolve. Now this becomes a challenge because creating the app apps uh, or the web-based interfaces that run atop these heterogeneous devices uh, becomes very difficult because there is a continuous evolution of the devices uh, which are running certain softwares, are based on platforms with specific operating system releases. Uh, they are talking to different databases. Each database is running a different environment, has different query language. And uh, then if we are using middlewares, these middlewares are also allowing us to talk to um, certain interoperable or compatible uh, protocols. But is it generalizable? It is not. So what is the solution? The solution is bringing everything to the web. Uh, so World Wide Web is a global platform that we have been seeing for internet-based services, which started off from, uh, from uh, web surfing or using the HTTP protocol for HTML web page access. So this is the classical protocol stack. It is the HTTP on top of TCP and on top of IP. Uh, Again, like uh, the typical client-server architecture as in web, we also can think about providing IoT services as in clients and servers. Um, for discovering new set of IoT-based services, we need to have a URL and DNS kind of mechanism. Now this technology, if it is interacting with things and is exposing the services of these things, uh, abstracting away the underlying details, this is how the web of things becomes relevant to the uh, IoT. So what possible services could we um, identify or could we demarcate in uh, uh, the services uh, plane? So we'll have web services as such. Um, these are the services which would be directly accessible on the web. Uh, we can think about a three-tier architecture. Uh, instead of a typical client server two tier architecture where we have the client talking to a web server and the web server is talking at the back end to a database server or uh, directly to the iot devices uh, then we can think about uh, the web of things service which is basically a service provided by an iot uh, through an adapter so uh, what happens is that web, web of things service is a service which maps the physical resources available and whatever functionality or service they're providing onto a certain service, which is exposed by um, the World Wide Web. So we can think about uh, uh, Web of Things services as basically the hardware connected web service. Then we can also have the mashup service. So mashing up actually means uh, taking the existing uh, services, which are more classical in uh, their nature, like IPTV, voice over IP, cloud services, and uh, integrating them with the uh, WOT uh, architecture. So uh, mashup services are also uh, one of the possible variants. We can consolidate again. Here we have the conceptual view of the IoT and WOT. Uh, we have the uh, web-based services which are web service as such, web of, web of IoT service, and then uh, we have the mashup service. Now you see we have uh, in this diagram specifically, we have uh, underlying architecture at the physical layer of uh, constraint devices and um, full-fledged devices. These devices are exposing their hardware interfaces for configuration, for data access, 
for data manipulation, data read, write to their appropriate uh, agents, which are known as the brokers. So Web of Things brokers are basically having respective agents according to every technology. So the, these constraint devices need to have some kind of intermediary broker, but for a relatively high form factor devices like uh, here we have the IP phone or a complete laptop or a smart television, they can talk to the web services themselves. They can expose their services directly through certain software plugins and drivers, of course. So the Web of Things broker allows the adaptation of different physical objects through their interfaces uh, by having the respective agents. 